What's up everyone? Mark Lobliner, TigerFitness.com. It is currently 2.53 a.m. Just drove in from Illinois to Ohio to HQ. Got my SJ Meals, salmon. SJMeals at gmail.com. Servicing Northwest Burbs of Chicago with some Zico bed. Uh, Zico bread. It's late as fuck. I'm tired. I need to get this meal in. And then I'm going to bed. But check it out. I didn't call this cardio confessions because sometimes I ain't doing fucking cardio. I want to make sure I get you a vlog at night. Here we are. Anyway, today was chest day. Awesome day. I went up to 405. Only did five reps. Got a lot of stuff. Did 10 sets of 10 dumbbell press. Did some hammer strength um, with 100 pounds. Did hammer strength incline press. Um, it was a pretty good workout, man. Did some cables, uh, crossovers. Did some tricep press downs. Did some abs. And I was good to go. From then on, I just worked. Took my daughter to practice and um, left the house around 8.15. Here I am, just got in, made this salmon, I'm good to go. So everything's rocking, man. We got Insurgent coming out on the 18th. We got the red machine hoodie and um, the new um, gray shirt. Machine shirt coming out on the uh, on this this Thursday, actually, so in two days. That's rocking and rolling. If I'm a bit tired, it's because I'm a bit tired. I've been awake for a long, long fucking time. 24 hours nearly. So with that said, let's just get to business. Kara Corey is coming in town on Thursday. Her and her husband Jason are in town. We're going to do some filming, some epic footage. Keep an eye out for that. It's going to be fun. We always have a good time. There's always great content. As you guys know, she's on this channel, and she does her cooking video on this channel. Every show has her own channel, um, Kara's channel, which is linked in the videos for her cooking videos. And I'm going to link it down below, but go ahead and check Kara out. Awesome people, amazing. And we're going to just get some really good content with her. Also owns RD Nutrition, that's Fitburn, is her product. Um, probably one of the best fat burners on the market. It has great things to do with cortisol control and also fat loss, thyroid support. You're going to have to look into that RD Nutrition Fitburn. We saw it on Tiger Fitness. So, um, some an email got sent from my daughter's soccer coach that somebody on the team felt bullied. And I remember when I played sports, you know, we talked a lot of shit, even at 10 years old, whatever, that is that is what it is. So my immediate inclination is to think it's Cammie, because Cammie talks a lot of shit, and because she's pretty good, she probably deserves to talk a little bit of shit. When I was a kid, like, if I wasn't doing things right in practice, my teammate would step up and say, yo, you're playing like a fucking bitch. Get your shit in order. Or, hey, you're not going to fucking do anything if you play like that. You're a fucking pussy. Get off the field, faggot, blah, 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 blah. You know how sports are. And that's not anti, that's not homophobic or by any means. That's just how motherfuckers talk on the field, right? My daughter's 10. I understand that they're going to be talking some shit. So I asked my daughter. I actually had her in tears because I really want to know if she was doing this. She vehemently denied it. But I want to get into the fact that we're at a point, we're on the tra training field athletically with your own team. You can't even talk shit. You can't even fucking joke around with the other team. I have a story to tell you guys. When I was a senior in high school, going into my senior year, I was heavily recruited. My best friend at the time, his name was Daniel Palmer. Never played a lick in his life. May have played a couple downs as a junior. Really was a bench warmer. Wasn't very good. But he'd been training with me a little bit. Not all the time. No one. Except for Leon Hatton, my junior going to my senior year, could train with me every single day because I out-trained everybody. But Palmer, he did his shit, man. He got it on. More of a nerdy kid, but he wanted to play ball. He was about 240 pounds. Big kid, just not very fast, right? And uh, we're going up head-to-head -head drills. You both lay on your back. And you flip over. One has the ball. One's on defense. You go at it. I'm this guy on defense. He's this guy on offense. And before the play started, Palmer's like, I'm going to fuck you up, low liner. I'm like, bitch, I'm going to make you my bitch. I'm going to fucking slam you to the ground. You're my fucking bitch. Everybody, everybody's in a circle, man. It was Everybody's getting ready. It's fucking hell week. And a lot of people go half-ass in drills. I have never gone half-ass in practice. That's just not what I did. It's not what I do now. You practice how you fucking play. And so we lined up, I believe, five yards apart. I'm talking all kinds of shit. Calling him a pussy. 
calling him the faggot word. I don't, I'm not homophobic, but I'm not anti-gay by any means, but that's just a word we fucking used. It is what it is. So we fucking, everybody, coaches were all for it. That wasn't bullying. That was talking shit. Long story short, we went up, flipped over. I hit him lower. Low man always wins at football. Wrapped him, picked him up. Dude weighed 240, so I didn't get full extension off the ground. His ankle got caught, slammed to the ground, ankle broke, senior season, missed every game. But it wasn't because I talked shit, but that's what motivated him to be better. Me talking shit's what motivated him to practice, and that's how people motivate each other on the field. We're at a society now, we're at this, this agent where everybody gets a fucking trophy, where everybody fucking can't, their fucking feelings get hurt. They go cry to mommy. I understand they're only 10 years old. But Jesus Christ, man, we're on a fucking athletic playing field playing elite travel fucking soccer. I'm sorry. I'm not going to say shit to the club unless they watch this bullshit. At the end of the day, the coach called it, and I love the coach. I love the coach. She called it bullying. Bullying is when you're at school, you make fun of someone for being fat, make fun of someone for this. But if you're on the field and you're just talking shit, trying to motivate someone to play better, I don't even know if it's my daughter who did it. That's the thing. Mm. Whoever the bullier is, you know what? They were probably just talking shit. Because that's what motherfuckers do on the sports field, right? But the person who got hurt, I'm guessing, probably isn't one of the better players, right? I'm guessing has always been coddled her whole life. And God forbid she faces a little bit of adversity on an elite fucking team. She goes and cries to her mommy, who goes and cries to the coach, who brings up the word bullying. Which I'm sorry to say this, but ever since Columbine has become a catchphrase. Look, I understand shit's bad, okay? Okay. I got bullied in school. I just had to be bigger than kids and I'd fight them and I'd win. People make fun of me for being fat. They make fun of me for being a fucking Jew. When I lived in Simi Valley when I was a kid, under 10 years old, between 7 and 10, the anti-Semitism I faced for my mom wearing a Jewish star on her neck was there. But instead of fucking crying and committing suicide, I went and I fucking fought for myself. I fucking fought for my rights, man. I fucking, I manned the fuck up. Kids these days don't man up. They fucking go to psychologists and they, they commit suicide because we, we tell everybody that, you know, it's okay to just just give up. When back in the day, my parents were like, you got to fight. You know what? You got to fucking defend yourself. Now we're in a world full of fucking unicorns and butterflies where everybody has a mental disorder. Every fucking Jewish woman's on fucking Prozac. And we're fucking telling people that, hey, oh, well, if someone treats you bad... It's okay to just give up. No, you fight back. You become better. You fucking come at them. In my case, if you punch a bully in the face hard enough, they're going to leave you the fuck alone. I was never a bully. But I've been bullied. And I skidded a lot of fights. But guess what? After I whooped a few asses, they learned who the fuck the bully was. And it wasn't them and it wasn't me. All right? It is what it is. My brother, same way, was bullied throughout school. Skinny fucking kid. Weighed about 90 fucking pounds in seventh grade. This kid was behind him just fucking with him. Just fucking with the back of his head. One day, my brother got up, turned around, and knocked him the fuck out. Knocked him the fuck out. My brother Aaron was a fucking midget, too. Small mother. He's 6'1 now. Bet you that kid won't fuck with him now. Mom came to school. My mom, as you guys know, who have been watching me a long time, my mom was military. Served in Israeli military. Special forces. And, um... Long story short, my mom went in and told the principal, she said, so you're suspending my child for defending himself. The principal said, yes. She said, you're a bitch. You know, <laughs> my mom was gangster like that. So what I'm kind of getting at is everybody gets a fucking trophy these days and no kids can face adversity or deal with it on their own without crying to mommy or daddy and crying the bullying term. Look, if my kids get bullied, I'm going to tell them to take it into their own hands. In fact, I had a situation where Thomas got bullied on the bus by a fifth grader who was in kindergarten. Thomas can't defend himself against a fifth grader. I didn't go crying to the school. I actually kind of did. I went to school. I reported it. But I also made sure the parents of the other kid knew that if their kid doesn't, mess, doesn't leave my kid alone, I'm going to beat the fuck out of those parents. Right or wrong. That's how we dealt with shit back in my day. And shit got done. Instead of kids shooting up schools and shit, we got to teach kids that they're going to fucking have adversity and that not everything is fucking rainbows and unicorns. Because in the real world, guess what? 
I can walk down the street, someone call me a motherfucker, I gotta deal with it, all right? I could have someone try to put me out of business every day with my company, I gotta fucking deal with it. Life's not fucking fair. And the reason these kids are flipping is because we keep telling them that everything's gonna be great, everything's perfect, you don't have to fucking win. Guess what? You got a fucking society of complacent pussies. And that's what it comes down to. It's my rant for the day. We need to fucking teach our kids to take accountability, take responsibility, and sometimes take matters into their own motherfucking hands. So, that was deep. Take another bite of this delicious salmon. All right. Mm. Fuck. It's 303. It's coming from man Zach. Hi, Mark. I know that bioavailability, bioavailability varies with different protein sources. My question is, what does your body do with the non-bioavailable protein? Is it excreted as waste, stored as fat, used fresh for energy, or something else? I'm just trying to dial in calories for each day and would like to know how to treat less bioavailable sources, if that's even necessary. Long story short, Zach, it's not necessary. My opinion is, if the protein biological value is above 70, or if it's from a whole food protein, um, such as whey protein, meaning a protein source protein, like whey protein, um, MTS whey, um, chicken, beef, fish. I don't think you have to worry about it. But basically, what a biological value is, is how much of that protein your body can actually use. So I don't even count protein from carb or fat sources, such as protein from peanuts, protein from broccoli, um, protein from fucking shit like that. Well, peanuts you could debate. I just don't think they're not complete sources. They're not very bioavailable. For example, the best protein you can have for bioavailability, which your body uses most of it, is whey at 100 to 159 biological value. 100 being the former benchmark, which was set by the whole egg, which is 100. Chicken's at 79 and casein is at 77. So when I tell you guys that caseinate is not worth taking despite the slower digestion, it's because the biological value is literally half that of whey protein and because when you combine a whey protein with a fat source, it slows down digestion. Unless you're drinking only casein and only whey throughout the day, it really doesn't matter. So those scam artists trying to send you, sell you blends based on time delivery, they're just fucking scam artists. It is what it is. They're just trying to sell you a protein that's inferior to whey. That probably costs less to make. So at the end of the day, I think that uh, whey protein is your best source. But as for shitting things out, look, don't, don't overthink this. Get in your gram per pound of body weight, okay, if that's what, you, if that's what your protein source is, protein level is, gram per pound of body weight, with protein sources such as fish, chicken, whey, etc., and count that as protein. Don't worry about a 74 versus 150. Don't worry about a, you know, an 80 versus a 90. At the end of the day, just get in enough protein. Your body will figure it the fuck out. I'm Mark Lobliner. TigerFitness.com Insurgent is coming at you December 18th. Appreciate you guys watching. That's not a game.